To me, this is an absolutely beautiful representation for pi. But how do we get here? One way is to examine the definite integral from 0 to pi of sine to the n of x. Now we don't know whether n is odd or even, we'll get to that in a moment, but we can use integration by parts nonetheless to come up with a recursive formula. Let's call this integral i of n and do the integration by parts. Let u be sine to the n minus 1, that would make du n minus 1 times sine to the n minus 2 times cosine x dx by the chain rule. We also need to pick dv. dv is what's left over. It'll just be sine x to the first dx, since we used sine to the n minus 1 as u. We antiderive this to get v. The antiderivative of sine x would be negative cosine x. Integration by parts is uv minus the integral of v du. And already this looks fairly clunky, but a few nice things happen. Notice if we evaluate this first part from 0 to pi, substituting pi gives us 0, sine of pi is 0. Plugging in 0 also gives us 0. Inside the integrand, we can factor out n minus 1, that's a constant. And we can use that good old Pythagorean trig identity, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. That way we can write the integrand in terms of just sine. Break it up like this so that we can see we have our formula i of n represented twice. This first part is just i of n minus 2, since the exponent is n minus 2, and then i of n itself. Thus, we have a nice recursive relationship. We can solve for i of n, or simply have this nice ratio. Now, that's just a recursive relationship. It doesn't tell us what this integral equals. We'll have to figure out what would happen if n was odd or if n was even. To make that happen, let's look at i of 2n. That would guarantee the power is even. Throw this into the recursive formula. i of 2n would be 2n minus 1 over 2n times i of 2n minus 2. And since this is a recursive relationship, we could use the recursion again on i of 2n minus 2. What would that be? It would be 2n minus 3 over 2n minus 2 times i of 2n minus 4 we're basically just dropping the recursion down by 2. And we could do this over and over again. The next recursion would be 2n minus 5 over 2n minus 4 times i of 2n minus 6. And this would happen all the way down until 5 over 6 times 3 over 4 times 1 over 2 times i of 0. Now, we can quickly calculate i of 0 just the definite integral from 0 to pi of sine to the 0, which is 1, this just comes out to be pi. And so i of 2n is pi times the product 2k minus 1 over 2k, where k varies from 1 to n. What if the power was odd? We can do the same thing for i of 2n plus 1. This ensures the power is odd. Well, doing the recursion again, i of 2n plus 1 would be 2n over 2n plus 1 times i of 2n minus 1. Recurring again, the i of 2n minus 1 becomes 2n minus 2 over 2n minus 1 times i of 2n minus 3. A very similar process, this would turn into 2n over 2n plus 1, 2n minus 2 over 2n minus 1, all the way down to 6 over 7 times 4 over 5 times 2 over 3 times i of 1, which we can quickly calculate i of 1. That's the definite integral from 0 to pi of sine to the first. This will just be 2. And so i of 2n plus 1 is the product 2 times 2k over 2k plus 1, where k goes from 1 to n. Now we know the value of our formula if n is even or if n is 
odd. But how can we mix and match and put these together? First note that since sine x is always less than one, larger powers of sine would make the overall quantity smaller. That is, if I do sine to the 2n plus 1, that's less than or equal to sine to the 2n. Since I'm decreasing the power, it makes the overall quantity larger, which is also less than sine to the 2n minus 1. This is true for any x in 0 to pi, which is the interval we're integrating over. But hey, this is just our formula i of 2n plus 1, which is less than i of 2n, which is less than i of 2n minus 1. And if we divide by i of 2n plus 1, some interesting things happen. On the very left, we would just get 1, that's i of 2n plus 1 over itself. I'll leave the middle alone. And on the right, we can just use the recursive relationship. Since i of n over i of n minus 2 is n minus 1 over n, that was one of the first things we calculated, this will just be 2n plus 1 over 2n. And we can find out what happens as n grows infinitely large by using the squeeze theorem. If we take the limit across the board, the limit of a constant is the constant itself. On the left, it's just 1. On the right, 2n plus 1 over 2n, that limit also tends to 1 by L'Hopital's rule. And so the limit of the ratio of these two functions, i of 2n over i of 2n plus 1, is also 1. Here's the big reveal. This limit is 1. But we also have the formulas now for these two functions, i of 2n and i of 2n plus 1. Those are those product formulas we calculated earlier, and since they're product formulas, we can combine them pretty nicely in one full product. We can take out the pi over 2 and take the limit as n goes to infinity. If you like, you could put the product on the other side just by taking its reciprocal, which means pi over 2 is this infinite product. Writing out the terms gives us that very interesting result.